Здравствуйте. Hi there. It's a great honor to present uh, here at Sberbank's conference. My name is Konstantin Shein. I will talk about UNET and everything related to it. Now I can see my presentation. Thank you. What is UNET? Here's an article of uh, 2019, and it's been quoted for over 19,000 times. Probably it will be one of the most quoted articles of the decade, or even the beginning of the century. This is the article that was released in 2015. So question is whether UNET is such a great technology, solving so many tasks, so it would be exciting for lots of experts in different domains. So spoilers alert, it's really, really good. Let me first tell you where I work and what I work for. I work for the Ural Federal University and also in the Institute for Neurology and Physiology of the Ural's branch of the Russian Academy of Sciences. The manager of my research group is Olga Solovyova, and we do not do neural networks per se. First and foremost, we do modeling of um, MyCard uh, processes. So we research the electrical processes in MyCard. That is the tissue of the heart, the muscle tissue of the heart. How my card is changing, how it's developing, how uh, how cardiac arrhythmia comes to be, uh, or different sorts of regular heartbeats. And this is the modeling of the my card of the person based on the data. For example, we have MRT. We simulate the model of a human body. That's a computer model, of course. And as a result, we can predict certain changes that are happening in the heart under the effect of certain medis medicines and substances. First, we do attribute-based segmentation. We create the actual region of the body where the organ is placed. And the data itself, of course, is not perfect. There are artifacts in the data uh, regarding different items or movements of human body, and that data can not always be easily processed. So if, uh, for example, there is a need to segment certain data, it leads to the problem that um, neural networks must be used. That's the best approach that we have so far and it provides the best quality as a result. Let me show you all of the most important white papers that we released in the last three years. Six of these white papers were specifically dedicated to segmentation of medical data using neural networks. Those six all use UNET. In addition, Many of these works were made not only with our group, but of course in cooperation with our colleagues from different uh, bodies and organizations. And today I would like to specifically talk about three of the researches, three of the white papers that we released, and of course about the insights. So, first, the segmentation of my card. We have this huge thing. It's called the uh, MRT machine with a huge magnet. When this magnet emits the field, the electrons of hydrogen atoms change their spin, and that leads to getting an image of where there is more or less hydrogen in the human body. We have hydrogen in uh, H2O in human body, so we see where there is more or less water in the tissue of the human body. So here, you want to highlight certain region in this image. What's the specifics of those regions? First of all, the borderline of those regions are not clear. They're blurry, can even be more blurry than we see here on an image. And by the way, uh, lots of areas are similar, with similar color intensity. So you need to select those areas that are specifically related to heart and not any other organ in the body. In the body. So 
we have been using UNET for that sort of segmentation. And that's the convolutional autocoder, autoencoder. So we first get an image, and the image, we would define certain signifiers, features, uh, and we get to a certain bottleneck when we get an image as compressed as possible, and then we get the extrapolation. But if we do teach the model with this architecture, do train the model with this architecture, it takes just really too long. I mean, your patient may die. That's why we get these gray connections that you see on screen, which help the neural network to train based on a uh, sign that is uh, on a on a property that is uh, that is not falling into that bottleneck. So in the end, we get the segmented image of a certain size. We tried also eNet architecture. That's also a popular approach. It's being used to process video stream. The specifics of this approach is that it can quickly, quickly process video. Almost in the real time, literally in real time, segmenting objects in the feed. And the very special feature is that the architecture with narrow blocks and the input of the block is summed with its uh, output so the neural network measures the delta instead of just converting the image uh, completely with the full loss of information. So next we also try to take the same architecture ENAT and added uh, the box convolution Based, by the way, on the skulk of our research, we decided to pick this approach to just see the result. So here's what we got. Here's what we can say about it. My card segmentation is not the most complex test because there are no thin lines or small regions. We have one big object, so we can use semantic segmentation. And therefore, the difference is that if we look, for example, at all of our data, the 3D volume of data, we can see planes, and then those planes, uh, there are there are certain segments based on the layers, and UNET works well even if the situation is not uh, that evident. It's very complex. At the top of the data. where there is uh, the where there is the uh, oracle or auricula oracle of heart the air is higher compared to the result that we expect UNAT actually wins all of the other approaches but if we look at the time how much it takes, ENET segments very quickly. I mean, the difference is by the factor of 10 or 20. And this is something that one should not ignore, because launching that asset and getting a result in one minute or in 30 minutes, that's a big difference. We should take that into account as well. This is our experience. So if you need to do the segmentation of the card, of the heart, and medium my card um, very quickly you can use ENET. If you have time, use UNET. Here are the results. The my card segmentation. And here's also segmentations of the vehicles of heart. But this, this is one of the works that uh, my colleagues did. This is uh, the other MRT device. It has the metal frame with an X-ray. This is the CT machine. Many 
people actually uh, have implanted CRTDs. That helps people to maintain their um, heart rate and live longer. If a person like that gets into the CT machine, on the image we see digital artifacts, uh, like uh, this, this uh, not digital artifacts, but metal artifacts, like this, this, this star with shadows. So there are dark portions behind it, and it's impossible to see. And the artifact itself, this metal, actually ruins the image around significantly. Now, let us see are there any other examples uh, in digital image processing that solve actual problem like this. This is called image impainting, meaning adding kind of a paint into image. Here are the examples. There is the image of a human being. The black square is, is being drawn out of it, cut out of it. And then the algorithm reconstructs the image. Please note that on the face of the lady, the lady is blinking, uh, but it's, she's not blinking when the image is restored. But the face looks like a face non, nonetheless after restoration. So. One of the ways to make him painting, if we look, if, if we pay closer attention to this architecture, there are lots of blocks here, and every single one is not just a box, convolutional box. Uh, there are certain specifics to this convolution boxes, but this is UNET by nature. Uh, you can actually uh, build the impainting algorithm based on the, which is to replace the segmentation task uh, with the impainting task, and it works. So here's the sample. We took the data and we kind of um, just painted over certain pieces on the images, and then we trained the model for to 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 look for error. The quality of him, him painting has been evaluated on the metrics of for structure validity and peak noise to signal ratio. So here's the result. A neural network is also being trained, and we have been using NMAR approach as a baseline solution. And neural network turned out to be better. Here are the results. It was good. We painted over. It turned out to be pretty decent. The same is happening with the uh, CT artifacts. It's not that we can restore all of the lines. The thinnest lines, the thinnest borders are impossible to restore. That's a problem. Uh, a few additional notions about UNET, a few uh, words about my personal experience. I tell to the students how to use the UNET. I teach them to use it. And uh, I have been using it quite a lot. And I would like to draw your attention to the major specifics of UNET. UNET is not the only architecture out there. People believe that this is the only way to segment. Not true. Actually, historically, uh, they first suggested just draw, uh, cutting tiles out of the image and predicting, uh, classifying every pixel separately. That is something that takes too long, that it can segment an image pretty decently. In addition, there are uh, uh, ResNet networks, ResNet approaches. They have these narrow blocks inside. These uh, networks are faster. They are faster to train. They deliver decent results. There are similar networks, similar to UNET, but they have more neurons, and you get a better result. And of course, we have pyramid networks. I mean, if you take a look at how they're put together and draw out certain lines, having drawn, having thrown out certain lines, it is possible to consider different architecture here, and that's pretty nice. Three ideas coming out of original uh, UNET white paper. UNET is so popular not only because of its architecture. We have also a very thorough description of how we can achieve better results based on that result, based on that architecture. That's mainly the neuroelastic transformation. This is the method of augmentation that works with almost every medical image. That is also strategies uh, of coverage. I mean, we are completing the image on the edges by this mirroring and uh, 
the input is becoming b b bigger in the network and the output is smaller. So we fully restore the image by covering windows that we are processing. That allows us to process uh, very big images with the neural network with, with the significantly, with the relatively small input. And also the weight chart, which helps us to segment thin contours working with every neural network. I mean, we set the high margin of error outside of regions that are close to, I mean, if there are two regions that we need to segment separately, we are providing high error margin for every pixel weight error to all of the pixels between these two regions. And that leads to the fact that neural network can separate it pretty easily and pretty well. And then we make the fill and we can separate every thin line. So that's how we travel from semantic segmentation to sample segmentation, which is good. Any narrow blocks, no matter how narrow they are from other networks, etc., they make the results inevitably better. So we can improve segmentation that way. UNET was first suggested in 20... 3D UNET was introduced very quickly in 2016 for 3D convolution cores. That worked very well for segmentation of the heart, but that takes, again, very, very long so long that it's not, not, not cool to work with. And also UNET is really good for engineering. We just take the number of box. So we see that it works. If we do that, of the fully convolutional network or RSNet, it will probably not work completely at all. After 2015, segmentation of medical images improved so much better. Most of the approaches that were before are not used at the moment. But speaking about engineering of the neural networks, we need to input data, we need to create the weight card, the weight chart sorry we need to do image processing and that leads uh, to the need of quality programming we need to know the fundamentals of image processing otherwise we will not be able to use these neural networks uh, therefore i would conclude please join us in innovation and write phd with us i'd be happy to answer any of your questions Constantine, thank you so much. Very exciting indeed. If AI in healthcare will replace doctor and do uh, medical jobs better than um, the people, will that lead to uh, the loss of competent medical professionals? Uh, computer will never replace a doctor because doctor is a psychologist. A uh, doctor needs to be able to talk to the person, find out what really is happening, maybe understand some uh, delicate issues. Many people just don't take pills, not because they literally forget, they just don't like something about them, like side effects. Computer will never be able to replace a doctor in this psychological communication. As for diagnosis, probably not as well. I mean, image processing will help to segment an image quicker and diagnose quickly, quickly read medical indexes, but probably based on that, it will be possible to prevent certain result. I mean, there are now cardiographic diagnosis, uh, uh, automatic cardiographic diagnosis devices. And those devices can be applied in, for example, countries where there's no uh, sufficient medical competencies, where, where, where there are just not enough uh, good doctors. But if we talk about high quality medical aid, a doctor can never be replaced by a machine or an algorithm because a doctor must talk to the patient, understand the patient, and doctor is responsible for the decision. Algorithm can only aid and, of course, help to prescribe the best course for treatment. Thank you, Konstantin. Thank you for helping us debunking one of the fears about healthcare and algorithms. Thank you. Bye-bye.